Hello everybody, my name is Alex. I am a developer from the spring 2019 semester for the MPH project or also known as the Miami-Dade Vacancy Compliance Project. In this video I will be discussing the shortcomings that we were not able to finish. But that's also a wish list for the coming semesters. What we primarily did in this semester is decouple the MVC architecture from Django, uh, Python's Django and we added Angular and we allowed Django to send JSON responses instead. This in turn caused us to not only recreate everything that had already been done before us but to we basically played a game of catch-up and then we also implemented features. So the first couple of things that we would have liked to have implemented but we actually didn't have the chance to can be found in the forgot username component. So I mark everything with a to do tag. Um, what you can do here is make a call to the authentication service. So I have plenty of instances where we do this throughout the project. And let's go ahead and close this and show you. It's actually going to be in MDC public housing source app services authentication auth service TypeScript class. So it's going to be something like this. This actually isn't complete. It still needs all of its parameters. Um, this is actually where we're going to have the forgot username and the forgot password. Both of these are going to be making backend calls to Django. So that basically goes through these first two. The next one is to also do the same thing for change password. So we have change password right here. As you can see, it does do the call, but it's not doing it correctly. It doesn't pass the correct parameters. Let's go ahead and go back here. So it does call this one, and this just returns a null, just for the simplicity of being able to build the Angular project. But it is not actually implemented. So this does need to be implemented. Let's go ahead and close this. So for numbers four and five, if we can go ahead to the login component, and you can see that we do have to do tags on here. So they say route to respective component. So route could be something like this. It's actually this. See it says to stay on the login page or you can route to the profile page. This we need to basically just route the, the current user to the username and to the forgot password. Those hyperlinks are located on the actual login.component.html and these are the button click events for them. So that goes through the first five things on the list. Number six is to change subscriptions to observables in the login component. So this here is the subscription. So in RxJS, which is a library that is used in Angular, there is a concept of an observable. You can do various thing with the, things with an observable. You can use something that is called a subscribe, which saves the current state of the observable. That is not generally recommended in, throughout the Angular community. This actually save states and it is not dangerous but you do not want to be saving any type of information what you in fact want to do is to do something like a pipe like this and inside of the pipe you would have a map and that's when you would map this here in fact you can also even do a pipe and then a tap and then a map so what a tap does for a pipe is it allows you to listen into the pipe and to cause side effects which will give you the data directly and you do not have to wait for the observable to finish mapping but in turn you can also not modify the data it is not common practice to modify output inside of the tap you could do this in the map so you're not just editing it here inside of the component class let's give you an instance where you would be editing it inside of the HTML as well. So the login wouldn't be the best place to show you. 
then the best one would be the home. So we have this guy open right here, right? There is things like this, for instance, which is the equivalent of an async pipe for an observable, except this is for a subscription. So in order to change this for an observable, you would add something called an async pipe, just like this, and you would state that it's async. And then you want it to be referenced as elite units or current elite units for better naming convention. And then anything that's inside of here, you could reference the current current I'm sorry it wouldn't be referenced in there it would actually be referenced inside of the div so let's go ahead and do this correctly so we could do current right there and as you can see it shows that it's being referenced what this does is it allows us to use that data from our observable in that point of time without having to save the state like a subscription would. What this else loading means is that while we do not have data inside of our observable slash subscription, it's going to be showing a little progress spinner so we don't leave the user hanging. As by popular and proper um, execution for anything asynchronous, you should show a user some sort of progress bar so they do not believe they're stuck and create multiple calls which can in turn, halt all of your backend services and create multiple database calls if it's not wired correctly or with like a singleton, for example. You do not want to do something like that. It'll halt the entire application for anybody who's using it. So here's where a subscription should be changed to an observable. Where else it should be changed to an observable would be here and here. Those should all be changed to observables. We can go ahead and visit here and as you can see I also left a to do. We want to change this subscribe to a pipe with a tap and a map and the same thing for the pick subscription. So let's go back to our wish list. That basically covers seven and eight. Number nine is the discrepancy graph inside of the home. So if we go back here, where is this? Yes, right here, this to do. So I would have liked to show a sort of graph of all, I guess, history of discrepancies or your percentage for the day how it's gone down in a bar graph or your percentage over time in a line graph. However, maybe users typically like a lot of flashy, pretty things to show them metrics. They don't want to see numbers the whole time. They want to see bar graphs and they want to see how graphs decline and how they raise. A lot of people get pleased very easily with these sort of graphs. So it'd be very nice if we can please them with these graphs of our metrics. It's also visually pleasing. As a developer, I don't want to be staring at numbers the whole time either. I want to actually be seeing our metrics through graphs, see how it's being put in comparison to all of our previous data, things like that. I also made a note of that right here. See, there's a show discrepancy reporting graph. I said maybe track past history with it. I don't know, things to show users that you're actually doing something with all that information besides showing a diff tool for your discrepancy. The last thing I didn't mention inside of that wish list, by the way, everything you find here, we have already done. So you can reference all of our past code and to keep, keep it simple, keep it in unison, make it look like one developer wrote this and not a bunch of other developers who don't understand the same guidelines as others did. The last one we want to look at is inside of the urls.py, which is located in your API folder. There's this route here. So I'm using the WebStorm ID. Normally you can just press Command or Control and click into it and it'll drag you into it. But WebStorm is typically for uh, files like TypeScript, JavaScript, other files like that, not Python. You can obviously edit it, but it won't. you won't get the ID feel like PyCharms. So 
we're going to find our unit status summary view set and that's actually here so in the installation guide there is mention that you need to populate a bunch of unit status summaries with these excel files i'll go ahead and show you where all those are they are right here they're all these files you don't want to import 13 files you're going to have to find a way to add this import in angular we have a very good example of it you can actually go ahead and check it out here follow the same information we already have it implemented here in the back end actually so in the back end you can follow what excel import did you can actually grab the information from the model of the import from your unit status and use the same type of structure here and don't call it excel import call it excel import for unit status summary something like that and then you can use that for the back end and the front end what you want to use is something extremely similar let's go ahead and find it it's called pick unit upload let's go ahead and look at the TypeScript class you want to do something like this a file upload with an on submit my partner Joseph wrote this he was he wrote this very well in my opinion it did its job without throwing any errors honestly which is quite impressive took us a while to actually figure out how to do that so we would like to implement this this would be probably for a semester or two maybe one honestly before they officially migrate everything over from using Django as a, an MVC to just using Django as a model and a controller and letting angular be the view so let's go ahead and give you that wishlist view one more time and let's add the tenth one so you can see it in the thumbnail of the video so add unit status summary sorry let's actually put spaces there to the angular components and that there is your grand list of the entire wish list what we would have liked to have accomplished this semester given the time constraints and everything that's going on with our lives and the amount of time it also took us to learn angular obviously we can do everything but we would have liked to so these are things that your app owner would like your scrum leader would like to have implemented we would have liked to have implemented they're definitely going to benefit everybody who works on this project so Thank you for choosing this project and hope you all enjoyed as much as we did.